started? We all good to go? We are going to make this piece very short and brief. We were going to say directly focused, laser focused on the JSERT. We have the language in front of you. And um, I want to make sure that it's what everybody thinks it needs to be. We will approve that item or not. And then we will um, go ahead and just recess again until uh, 3.45. Senator, is this the language that was agreed upon by the group? It is my understanding from Dr. Blake Flanders that this is what has been agreed upon by all of those that are involved. And to be clear, that would be um, the University of Kansas, Kansas State University, Johnson County Community College. There's been some question about why would they be involved? Because it's their service area. That's why they're involved. Um, so all of the bodies um, that should have been involved in this are now, and this is the language that has come from the Board of Regents. All right. Is there unanimous consent for this to be added into our Representative Wynn. Thank you. So um, what was happening before this amendment? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Prior to this amendment, we keep in mind we had an amendment that we did approve um, before we left on break when we were working as a conference committee. It was revised from the four-word amendment that was agreed upon at the rail. But what has been status quo for this particular facility is they've been limited to just two areas of study that could be offered. Okay, if we are all in agreement on this, we want to add that to our conference committee report, and we will go ahead and recess until 345. Thank you.
meeting to order. Hope that we can be very productive. Um, the first item we want to talk about is the safe and secure. We would like to propose that we use $1 million for ARPA with ARPA funds and the remaining $4 million with SGF. That's our first item we're proposing. The next item for the online math program, we would keep our language the same, and um, but we would make a couple of adjustments. First, $4 million would be used with ARPA if um, for some reason that money was not able to be used, then it would revert to SGF. The second year for the online math program would be up to $2 million for SGF. This would be a similar to a reading program in the past in which 90% of schools opted to use it. We will allow opt-in. However, Representative Wynn provided language before we took break that required reporting whether or not you used it or not. So we would be very interested in finding out how schools that are using the program benefit compared to schools that are not using the program. So that reporting um, requirement is will stay intact. We would like wording that says recommend usage of the program. The next item we would like, and again, I'm just going to list the items and then let you all respond to them. After you have a time to respond, then we'll move on to making sure we have other items in terms of um, that are in 2567. Third item is we will uh, propose to maintain the survey language that parents do have an opportunity to review surveys prior to them being administered. We will add language back that existed from sub House Bill 2662, page 9, lines 32 and 43, just in case we need reference, and page 10, 1 through 18. And that would include language relating to risk assessment for credible risk of suicide. So we want to be sure that um, opportunity is available to our school districts that have crisis teams in place. They'll be able to take care of imminent risk. The last item is one that has already been brought up by Senator Baumgartner. It's House Bill 2466, which is computer science. And then um, it includes, it appears that the, um, um, the omnibus bill will have the $1 million for KBOR. We will fund the $1 million for the KSDE portion. And then I believe there's a $40,000 for CTE. There are some other items we need to make sure of, but um, I will now turn it over to the Senate. Thank you very much, Chair Williams. Um, we are in agreement with regard to um, the ARPA money for Math Nation. Excuse me, online math, virtual math. Um, for all school districts, and they will not need to be, um, it, it is not based on what percentage of students are below grade level. It will be available for all schools to participate. Um, so we do agree to that $4 million for this year with the subsequent $2 million for the outer year. Um, we are in agreement with the school safety program with the one million of ARPA and the four million of SGF. We do agree that the one million needs to be included for the computer science program. That would be those um, grants going to schools um, for employees as well, and that would be going and overseen by KSDE. We are also in agreement with the language that's being added with regard to um, any type of surveys or questions asked of students if they appear to be in the midst of some type of crisis. And we emphasize again the importance of we want all, um, all adults to work quickly to help any child in need. So that is always the ask of the legislature, that that be addressed immediately. 
Likewise, we want parents to be notified immediately as well. So you triage and start that assistance to the child, but notify parents immediately so that they can be there and be supportive as well. So we do support that language addition. All right, we are making progress. And on the CTE for 40,000, was that something we had already agreed upon? It was something that we had agreed upon, uh, the 40,000. Um, and that 40,000 is dispersed to the school districts that are in that service area for Washburn. And Washburn would also receive the, a portion of that. Okay. All right. We also want to ensure that from 2567 that we did include the impact aid funding of $13 million. We, the language is there. We want to be sure that all the funding is also with it. So to rehash some of the items that we have done today, uh, we have the Promise Act residency, the Promise Act program criteria, Open enrollment moves to years 24-25 and eliminates military automatic acceptance. Includes the new JCERT language. Includes an increase to virtual funding from 5,000 to 5,600, which includes 6.4 million of total funding. Yes. Madam, Madam Chair, sorry to interrupt, but they did the runs again and it is actually $6.6 .6 million. $6.6 .6 million, we'll make that adjustment. Um, dyslexia coordinator, we would add SGF for $100,000. GBA number two, which is $11 million, that's based on caseload adjustments for CAPERS. We are also adding from House Bill 2239, the statewide property tax reduction. It went from $20,000 up to $40,000, and that loss in rev revenue of $42.8 million will be added through SGF. We also would want to give Nick the ability to make any technical cleanups necessary to uh, secure the intent of the conference committee. Other items that we may have missed. There is one item, Madam Chair, um, and I thank the revisor for this. So when we moved back the date for school districts as far as students being able to transfer and those funds following them. Um, we need to move back the date for the um, legislative post audit. So we need to move that date by one year, please. All right, good. Could you share one more time with me um, with regard to the capers? Yes. What's that amount again? The, it, it is $11 million. It's GBA number two. And I think it's 11 straight. Is that correct? 11.1. Thank you. 11.1 is a GBA two. And it's one of the latter items in the, in the stack. Item 10. Thank you. Is there anything else we missed? Representative Wynn, anything you can think of? Represent or Senator Erickson? No? Nope. Okay. You're good? I'm just, okay. just We'll give you a minute to go through your totals. Just speak briefly. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think it's just important. I just want us to go through what it is that we're adding for our kids. 
And again, it's adding funding for our kids. That impact aid is 13 additional million dollars going to those school districts that have been shorted that funding for all these years. The courts didn't address this. In fact, the four plaintiffs that sued the state never addressed this. They were not concerned about that fund going to those school districts. So we have corrected a slight that has occurred for many years. We're adding $6.6 .6 million to the funding for our virtual schools. That's significant for a number of reasons. Our virtual schools in our state's enrollment has more than doubled in the past two years. But what's more significant is they have not received a penny more per student since 2015. Not a penny more per student. No waitings for children with, that are one credit, six credits, a year behind. No extra funding for any special needs. They have been a flat $5,000 again, never addressed, never addressed by the four plaintiff school districts that sued this state for more funding. They were not concerned about those virtual students. We are addressing that need for our virtual schools. And I have to tell you that quite frankly, what we have learned in our Senate education hearings is not just the public, but even our legislators. Many believed that the virtual schools were for profits, didn't even recognize virtual schools as a part of our public school system. So it is time to address that. It was the legislature that created the Dyslexia Task Force. And from the point in which that task force came out with their report, they were always asking for a statewide coordinator. There has never been funding that's been made available by the Department of Education, by our nearly 300 school districts, by the governor of this state. The legislature is addressing that, and we're using SGF funds for that. What we do know, take away COVID, and just look at the numbers prior to that, that students are not improving in their math scores. We know that at the community colleges, at our technical colleges, and at our universities, Math is the area of general education that is needing the most remedial work for kids that have just graduated from our public schools. The funding has always been there since the Gannon decision. The funding that the court said was adequate. The funding that even in the governor's veto decisions has said has been there and been fully provided for our schools. And yet the way we go about teaching math has changed very little. There are some school districts that had the means to adopt outside online programs for home study. We're making sure that it doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter what your home language is, you will have the opportunity to have math tutoring. And we, we feel it's appropriate that it would be ARPA funds. It was the senator or the Senate position to originally fund that. So I appreciate that we are assuring there are funds not only for next year, but for the subsequent year. School safety is important. And that's why we are making sure that funds are available. Five million dollars. We know right now we have school districts that don't have SROs. They don't want to share the cost with their local law enforcement. What is the cost of safety for our children? All we have to do is look at what happened recently with a ghost gun in a school district that fortunately had an SRO who served and protected, put his life ahead of others to protect those in those schools. Any school district that doesn't have an SRO system 
It isn't because of lack of funding. It's right here, and we're going to provide it. Finally, we're going to address what isn't happening in our schools, and that is computer science. Check the data from the other education committee that had the hearings on this. Look at how many high schools and middle schools in our state don't offer a single computer science course for the kids that will graduate. We are in the 21st century. For nearly two years, we relied on computer skills for virtual education during the COVID pandemic. I'm excited about the CTE pilot because our career tech ed has never fully embraced our kids that have disabilities. And kids that are on the spectrum, kids that need additional assistance, they deserve a career path that's beyond washing dishes or putting groceries in a sack. And we know there are certificate programs out there for them. So we look forward to hearing the information that comes back. Madam Chair, if you strike out the CAPERS funding, what we are doing here is we are putting in roughly 30 million additional dollars above and beyond that next step of state-based aid, above and beyond what school districts will be receiving. And again, these are districts that have had a significant loss in attendance. With 19,000 fewer students last year, 16,000 fewer students this year, they have been fully funded as if we were at the attendance that we were prior to pandemic. I can't even account for all of the federal funds that have come in and gone directly to our schools. I do feel, quite frankly, Madam Chair, we will have some legislators that will say, this is too much money. But when I look at the way in which we are addressing, we are targeting this funding. It's areas of need that we know that are there. Virtual funding, nearly half of those students are special need or at risk because they're behind in their learning. Federal impact aid, it's there for a reason because those are underserved. Those are, those are districts that can't have bond issues because it's federal land. Dyslexia coordinator, I remind you, up to four out of 10 kids might have that type of cognitive learning disability. Math, we already know where those scores are. The kids that will benefit the most are going to be, again, those that fit in the at-risk category. CTE and computer science, again, is addressing where we are behind in our state. We are behind where we should have been in the 20th century. So when we ask, what are we doing for kids that are at risk? What are we doing for our kids with special needs? We've targeted it right here with all of this funding. Now I have to tell you, we actually heard in the Senate hearing, don't target money, just give us the money and let us decide. Now, we're going to target the money because we expect to get results. We expect to receive reports. We know that there will be data. And I look forward to hearing the results of these new and different, and quite frankly, some of them are going to be innovative changes for our kids in Kansas. I think one thing that's been missed with regard to having the virtual math tutoring is it's not only going to help the child, but it's going to help the parent that is there trying to support the child when they're doing their homework. The parent can adjust it to the language that they know best. And we know that parents were really impacted during COVID when we were virtual, when they were the teachers and they were the tutors, and they were trying to supplement what was happening from their school district. 
this will be a significant benefit to Kansas families. I tell you, Madam Chair, I appreciate that we have come to a resolution. I know all of us wanted this before veto session, but I have to say, quite frankly, this is better. This is better than before veto session, and I think you agree as well. Thank you, Madam, Madam Senator. And uh, other final comments, Representative Wynn. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, I have been in the House for 22 years, and um, I've always put student achievement, actually, at the top of the list. So um, some of your comments, Senator, um, you're not alone in your, your sentiments. And COVID, no doubt, um, made a serious impact, but um, we've got to move past that. The one thing I am taking issue with you that I, that I found disturbing, unless you know, you're entitled to your opinions, and I respect that, but unless you have evidence that the school districts who sued didn't have those students in mind, and I'm not saying just because they didn't mention it in their lawsuit, but if you have evidence that they didn't have those students in mind, then that's one thing. But to make a statement like you did, that is, that's a little sweeping, and I'm sure you're not you're not going to say anything that you don't have evidence for. So that was, I do believe, you know, that um, statement, I, 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 must, I must stand in opposition to, you know, you saying that. Um, but that, again, at the end of the day, we're all about student achievement. And again, being in the House, I don't, I don't uh, have a relationship with you, and I don't know how you... Uh, deliver your messages. The only thing I hear you and hear, but um, that one statement I think is was a little interesting, and I'll use the word interesting. So thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Baumgartner. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't apologize, and I stand by my statement. Those districts did not ask for more funding for virtual students. Those districts did not ask for any type of funding for um, anything that would address dyslexia, I, I stand by my position. Okay, Representative Wynn and then Representative Erickson. I did not ask you to apologize. Um, we're, we're, we're all adults. But uh, again, if, if the legislature itself is just now dealing with dyslexia, and that has been a struggle, we all know in this committee especially, so again, I'm just going to publicly say that um, I will take issue with that type of statement that they didn't care about. You know, not addressing is one thing, but to say that you didn't, they didn't care, I don't believe you have that evidence. Senator Erickson. Thank you, Madam Chair. For those not familiar with the Gannon lawsuit, the Montoy lawsuit went on for decades. I happened to be on the Board of Education in USD 373, the home of Schools for Fair Funding. Intimately familiar with that process and those decisions. I saw year after year after year, and being an educator, we were told, not your fault, legislature's not funding schools appropriately. If only we had the resources, we could be successful. But we can't because we don't have the resources. And when I remember the night very vividly, I was at a school board meeting when the decision was announced that the plaintiffs won that lawsuit, and there was celebration. Here we are. By the definition of the plaintiffs, what they asked for, what they wanted, and what they got, 
fully funding education. No doubt about it. Those are the facts. And the fact remains, what did our students get for that? What did the taxpayers get for that? And I want to be clear, if you look at the data, COVID, we were, we were underperforming before COVID. COVID absolutely affected how we do school, but it did not cause what we are seeing. So my comments on this particular, let me bring it home to what we're doing here. I have a big problem with giving school districts any more money. One, because they base their whole premise on just fully fund us according to Gannon. We are doing that. Two, that additional funding has not benefited our students and our teachers to the level that it should. That, in my opinion, is not being responsible or a steward of our taxpayer money. And we have heard time and time again the overwhelming additional needs of this state and to allocate more money voluntarily for education goes against my Intellect, that being said, my focus is on the students. And if school districts are not going to spend the money in a way that benefits students, then it is incumbent upon the legislature to do so. And I'm going to take a leap of faith that this allocation that we're making today will make that difference. And I hope I don't regret that. And rest assured, I will be going through this with a fine tooth comb every step of the way. Because it's time that we make it about the kids. And we say it is but we need to produce results for kids. So Madam Chair, I will be supporting this with some reservation, and my hope is that with us specifying the allocation of these funds, that we will see a difference for our kids, and that is my priority. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, well, I appreciate the comments from the committee. We have had quite a session. I want to thank uh, Holly, my assistant, and I know Rep or Senator Baumgartner would also like to thank her assistant, Cindy, who have been helping us. Of course, JG, Gabrielle, and team, and Nick as well, tech, always tech. Nick as well, and I know Nick is excited to get started on putting all of this together, and I don't want to delay him in the process, so in doing so just please let us know when we need or you will find us for signatures. Will that be tomorrow? Tomorrow for signatures. Okay, JG, Deborah, Tamara. Tamara. Yeah, oh my goodness. Okay, Tamara, the invisible person here today. She has been great. She's not here with us today, but we do appreciate her, Jason, yesterday. So thank you very much. Uh, we will officially adjourn and we'll see you on the other side.